I have 624 individual cards, 74% of all Super Nintendo USA releases. There's also some obscure peripherals. 11, 12, 13, 14. One of the things I always like to get was ridiculous and crazy controllers. Yeah, this looks like Harvest Moon. Six Space Invaders games. Super Noah's Ark 3D. These are super collectible nowadays. I think it's like a game G. Jun SNES, Jun SNES. Jun SNES. Frankie, when you've got a collection as big as mine, you've got some things that are kind of rare, kind of unusual, and that's what we're gonna be looking on today. Six different items that I wanna show you today, and you, Keith. I guess. The people at home, we wanna show them too, maybe. We did light the entire thing and film it with several cameras. If it was just us, we wouldn't bother with all that trouble. <laughs> no. This is how you have private conversations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what these are, there were a few different ones of these and I should have bought more because now they are absurdly rare. Inside, there are six Space Invaders games. I did buy two sealed cases of these that still have their intact tape across the top. The franchise that Atari made famous. There was a Super Nintendo game. We can pull it up. Do you want to talk about this cartridge you have that loads up all the games? It's called the SD2 SNES, and you pull a little flash card in the top, and you can load it up with ROMs and just play them whenever you want. And since I've gotten it, I play a whole lot more Super Nintendo. It can emulate almost all of the special chips in cartridges, which means games like Star Fox you can actually play. It's called Space Invaders, I think. Yeah. There's 12 copies, 12 sealed copies that have not seen the light of day since they left the Nintendo factory. It's pretty basic. Huh? I'm just laughing at the art of the guy. <laughs> That's not what I think of when I think Space Invaders. It is just Space Invaders. Not necessarily super interesting because they're sealed. I'm not gonna open them up. You have two boxes. Keith, I know. He doesn't want you to keep talking about those boxes. Because he feels like the longer he dwells on the boxes, the longer we're gonna be like, just open one. I was debating saying the audience wants to see the inside. They don't, it just looks like six super, I have a sealed Space Invaders cartridge somewhere around here. Why are they in this kind of box? When it was shipped to a store, they would have received these. It doesn't seem like something would be that sought after in a collection though. Nobody kept these boxes. So right now on eBay, there is one of just the cardboard box is $199. Really? I think I could get at least $150, $200 a piece from. So if enough people like, comment, and subscribe, you could probably open up a box and buy uh, a new one. Very unlikely, Keith. If this video, this video right here, if it gets 250,000 views, 250,000, I will open one. All right. All right. All right. It's on. You get me 250,000 views, I'll sacrifice a piece of my collection to make it basically worthless. Some of this so precious we can... tape. <laughs> we're gonna reseal it afterwards. But now we're gonna move on to something that's a little more interesting. This is my copy of Super Noah's Ark 3D. This is the only widely distributed non-licensed Super Nintendo game. You have to hook another game onto it to make it work. Whoa. Lock-on technology? Lock-on technology. So the security chip in a normal Super Nintendo cartridge could be accessed through it. It won't go without a, a game. And you can see it almost completely disappears into the Super Nintendo when it's in. It's hiding out. Yeah. Like, I'm not illegal. I'm like, oh, I'm an adult. Yeah, it is very little rascals. Yeah. The thing that actually makes this so rare is the fact that it's complete in box. This one's in really good shape. They put more effort into the manual than the game. I like how it tells you Ginny the Giraffe, Carrie the Kangaroo. Oh, yeah. Jesus the Savior. <laughs> Jesus the Savior. Super launches, the feed launches. I would never expect a religious game to have launchers. <laughs> this is based on the Wolfenstein 3D cartridge, but they did actually license the code from the company. Basically, a mod for Wolfenstein 3D that you're shooting mean animals on the ark. With a slingshot. That actually feeds them a pellet which puts them to sleep is the idea. It is kind of a weird like sequel concept to the Noah's Ark story. Yeah. Which is like, well once he's actually on the ark, you don't think that every animal behaved, did you? No, he had. You had to run around and <laughs> slingshot the hell out of him. I think you could play this with the mouse too. That's kind of crazy. We'll be out of the ark in six days. The animals are a tad bit restless now. Yeah, so this is fan fiction, religious yeah. fan fiction. Religious fan fiction. Oh, I'm already dying. Oh, there's a goat. How ungrateful. I like, know. this guy saves all the species, and like one goat kills the guy. Yeah. <laughs> there is a message there. And Don't try. The next thing I want to talk about is these games right up here, what's called not for resale games. And these are super collectible nowadays. Really, the only thing that's different about these is the label. And they are, in fact, just regular games, but what they were for was for the in store demonstration system. I guess it was to stop the store from selling it. Every cartridge of Sonic I've ever seen yes. says not for resale. That really? was a slightly different circumstance. What happened there is that was the pack in game. So Sega didn't want people taking the game out of the package, selling the console, and then selling the game. Highly collectible, a copy of Star Fox with this particular label. 
goes for about $160. The next thing, Frankie, I wanna look at is one of the rarest things in my collection. These are the Star Fox Weekend competition cartridges. In 1994, they had a, a competition to try to get the absolute highest score on a special Star Fox cartridge. Yeah. After the competition was done, they either gave away the cartridges or sold them to people. There were not very many of them. It's in the five to 600 range. Uh, and I have one of the US ones and one of the European ones for Star Fox. There is also a Donkey Kong competition cartridge that for many years I wanted to buy, but even at that time, even in 2008, those cartridges were out of my price range, in the four to $500 range. I was on the continual watch out for one in the 350 range, which is what I was prepared to pay. I never found one. Nowadays, they're selling for seven, 800. So this is not the same as a normal copy of Star Fox. Frankie, I think we should give this game a try yeah. and see what score can we get in the official Star Fox competition. Right. Is it just the first level? I'm already dead. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta suck so bad? It's impressive graphics for SNES. It certainly is. Even if it hasn't aged great. It's like approaching Nintendo 64 graphics. This is like the blueprint. The way this works is each competition cycle is four minutes. Four minutes to get as many points as you can. I have 1,755. The absolute record is 144,000. Which is funny because I never really pay attention to points in games for the most part. I don't think people really do. I'm not great at Star Fox to begin with. No, I, I never really played the SNES one. The N64 one is just so superior. Yeah. As we all know, they canned the release of Star Fox 2 for that I very know. reason. Yep. The Nintendo 64 one is so sweet. Can they just do an HD remake of that for the Switch and call it they a day? They can. Just do that. Uh, well, I sucked, basically. So besides the cool cartridge itself, which has a unique label, I've also got a Star Fox competition pin. I think when you bought the cartridge, you also got the pin. And you also got this cool little flyer, which gives you information about the competition. And this is the Star Wing competition cartridge, which is just the UK version of that same cartridge. What else you got, John? Well, this is a weird one, and I don't even think I've ever plugged this in. You know what it reminds me of right off the bat? A 32X for Sega. Yeah. 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 I didn't notice till today, it's a double slot. I think it's like a Game Genie. It's called Game Wizard, and it's got a kind of gothic font on it, which makes you think of high fantasy. I'm gonna clean it first. The options are normal, scan, and action. Here, we're, the game we're gonna put in the top, how about Tetris Attack? That's a good one. It didn't change anything. Let me turn it off and change it to action. Doesn't seem to have any effect. How about scan? I mean, it's successfully <laughs> passing through the game. Oh. oh, hey. You know how you had Game Genie codes, and if you wanted to really play around, you could modify the Game Genie codes? This lets you find codes with this device. We got a copy of Mario World anywhere around here? Okay, auto code scanner. So we're gonna scan for the number of lives. So we'll just do a nice easy one. I suspect once you find your code, then you turn to action to actually turn it on. How many lives do you start with in Super Mario World? Four or five. No, but it has to be the right number because it's gonna scan for it. Uh, what? What a horrible pain. Five, okay. Auto code scanner, number of lives, five. Show possible codes. There is nothing valid now, please. I think we might need a manual for this. It might be too rare to try to figure out. Just a Game Genie alternative that you probably didn't hear too much about. And, and it's it, largely unusable. Well, no, it has its own code. <laughs> it probably came with a code book. Game Wizard, I never heard of it. Yeah. Game Genie, we all heard of it. Remember the game Shark? Game yeah. Shark, yeah, that didn't show up till the PlayStation times, but it was still really cool. Actually connected into the parallel port on the back of the PlayStation 1 on that. So the next item, and the last item we're gonna look at today is these Nintendo Power cartridges. I love the magazine so much that I'm like slightly giddy. It has nothing to do with the magazine. Sold only in Japan. They're a early flash cart, basically. A licensed flash cart. They have 32 megabits or four megabytes of flash memory inside. You would buy your cartridge, the cartridges cost 40 bucks. They didn't come with any game at all. Then you take it to a kiosk, and for between $10 and $40, you would load a game onto it. And then you could play that game on here as long as you wanted, but if you didn't want that game anymore, you just bring it back, they erase it, and for $10 to $40, you can get a new game. Wow. In Japan, cartridges were more expensive than they were in the US. They were usually $100 a cartridge. Did they have the ability to just rent them from a video store like we did? That wasn't really as much of a thing as it is here. You could also load more than one game. You could fill up your whole memory with games. The biggest single game that they made was 32 megabytes, except for one, which is Star Ocean. But almost all games would fit on one cartridge. Hey, this might be a good time for me to ask uh, an important question. Sure. You have a lot of Mario Paint cartridges. I do. They used to sell Mario paint cartridges for two bucks. Two bucks, you get a Mario Paint cartridge out the door. The great thing about those Mario Paint cartridges is the circuit board is the biggest circuit board there is. It has the most memory capacity, has a battery backup. So if you had a bad cartridge, you could take the chips out of that bad cartridge and put it in a Mario Paint game, 
and it would work just fine. I think I used one to fix a cartridge. Most cartridges are actually really reliable. So as a result, I probably have 10 to 15 copies of Mario Paint. We're gonna try out a couple of them. I mean, the, the games are obviously gonna be in Japanese. When you boot into these cartridges, you end up on this screen. What we're seeing here is the game list, says game list at the top, and then it has a game. Now, I don't know what game this is. Let's try it. So what you have here is whatever the last kid put on the cartridge. Yep, Harvest Moon? Yeah, this looks like Harvest Moon. What a delightful find. <laughs> well, now I kind of am morbidly curious about what's I want to know what's on every single yeah, one. Yeah, well, we should figure it out. Do we want to take bets on what the game is? I think the next game is going to be... Usually... Kirby Superstar. Usually... Street Fighter 2 Turbo. First of all, it wouldn't be any game with a special chip, because these don't have special chips. What's the game? We got some very nice fantasy imagery I here. I see a wing. Uh, I'm going to skip this. Zach, what does it say? Fire, is it it's Fire, Fire Emblem? Emblem. Yep. It's a Fire Emblem music. Yeah. This is a 1996 Fire Emblem game. The real cartridge is actually very rare. This one doesn't even have the menu, just boots right into this game, which means it's taking up the full pack. That's cool. Okay, let's try the next one. Next. My guess is it's gonna have Super Bass Fishing 3 on this cartridge. <laughs> yes. What kid would go to the kiosk and pick up the Super Bass? <laughs> I don't know. I can just imagine like a fish enthusiast Japanese boy. Remember that in Japan especially, this wasn't just a system for kids. So Super Black Bass 3, you know, that's a, an, an excellent Super Bass game in the Super yeah. Bass series. So let's give this one a try. Konami. Okay, so what could it be? It's Castlevania? I don't oh. know. Will we never know what game we're playing? So there's an anime girl. What, what month and year do you want to start? This is going to be like a dating What's sim. What's your birthday? What's your... It's asking all these questions of you. It's clearly one of those um, Japanese dating sim. All right, so... That is at least some of what John A owns. set of rarities, and we're going to have another show just like this in which we look at more rarities, so I hope you like this one. <laughs> and don't forget, 250,000 views. He's going to open up I'm a box. I'm going to open up a box. And burn the contents. Wait a minute, I didn't say anything about that. Next time on Judd's Nest.